place in front of your um, chair. Right, kit's in charge. Go to the tip, darling. Up. 
in the bow um, than you were, Kit. I don't know yeah. everyone else, but yeah. So that's the first time we've got to get to the tip. So start again. <laughs> Very good. Well done, everyone. Lovely playing. Right, Devin, what would you like to do? Um. Oh, sorry. We are officially tracing techniques right now. So uh, we talked a little bit about Musette being a good review piece for the harmonics in this piece, but what else would you use to improve this piece going back? Kit. Um. What would be a good piece to review for your light sort of brushy, maybe lifted strokes in review? Happy Farmer? Yeah, Happy Farmer, yeah. For so long, it's embarrassing. Beret, <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Which is that? Good. No, two grenades. Two grenades. Oh, God. Number Someone seven. Fire me. Fire me now. <laughs> <laughs> two grenades. Which is dance? Nino. Uh, Lily Uh. Bur Exam piece seven. Sorry? Exam piece. Oh, uh, Minya and D. Well done. And? Dockery. Good. So which ones have lifted strokes that you would pull out to use this, to, to get this piece ready? Witches. Hmm. No. I don't think Wait, so. Wait, no. I'll see if I mean, you can see. at the same time. Hang on. No. <laughs> <laughs> if we're thinking about, because there's loads of different bow strokes in this piece, right? So if you're thinking about, for example, <laughs> If you've got a student who's playing like a kind of more perpetual motion type of bow stroke and you want it to become more lifted, yes, here. There's a good bit to do. What else? The piece that has everything in it, obviously you could do. Yes. Yeah, very good for lifted, that kind of lifted strokes. Joe is expiring <laughs> with excitement about saying. Is it actually about birds, birds or does it just sound like birds? I can look it up. I'm not a syncopation girl. Oh, thank you. The practice of displacing the beats or accents in music or a rhythm so strongly that beats become weak and vice versa. Yeah. Or the shortening of a word by dropping sounds or letters in the middle. Syncopation? Mm -hmm. The shortening of a word? By dropping sounds or letters in the middle. Really? Such as, as in symbology or symbology or Gloucester for Gloucester, which is happy in the middle. Oh, I didn't know that was called syncopation. But I still think that's rubbish though, because the example's given, I don't think anybody would say. Well, Gloucester, you have. Yeah, but. It looks like Gloucester. You yeah, got Chester. <laughs> Gloucester. In terms of spelling, maybe, but... Yeah, but that's what it means, isn't it? Yeah. Go to Gloucester, is that? Anyway. <laughs> no, well, I've never heard... I've got an English literature degree. I've never heard of syncopation being that. Anyway. Right. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, yes. So your main pieces for Mignon... For... <laughs> Sorry. Your main pieces for Boccherini, in terms of light, light bow strokes, would be Happy Farmer, Gossack. Um, you could do Handlebury. It's not really what, how we tend to play it. Um, definitely Mignon. And then there you are. Good. Devin, what else would you work on in this piece? Um, dynamic. Very good. Yeah. What would be a piece that's got similar dynamics? Um, the fuller that piece? Yeah. 
Um, How would you describe it, most of the dynamics in this piece? Uh, like loud, soft dynamics. Good, yeah, yeah. like echoes. Echoes, yeah. So like...
Because obviously, like we were saying, like could be, could be, could be. Mostly, like dynamics are kind of pretty much there from the middle of book one, aren't they? So mm -hmm. you can almost pick anything to work on dynamics. So you're also looking for a stylistic uh, similarity. It's now going to the small scale crescendo. Crescendo. Because you've got the bigger, bigger, longer form one, and this is kind of like more dramatic, but in a shorter period. Yeah, and one of the things that's particularly tricky for the kids about this is um, <coughs> you've got very quick diminuendos. Um, diminuendo? Yes, good. Another piece, Kit, for dynamic for this one. Um, there's a very clear, bing, this one. Thinking about the style being similar, lots of slurs, low control. Which is a very slurry piece in book two. What? Good. Exactly right. Yeah? Do you have that? I didn't know my head, but I can see it. <laughs> I was looking I was looking for it. Where is it? Yes, absolutely. 
well, sad lots of things. Yeah, if you're going to do, if you're going to do, the, if you're going to change it, you can make lots and lots of things into the minor. But yeah, there's very little. <coughs> isn't there? There's really not very much. Um, good. Uh, I was thinking as we were playing. I think one of the things that happens in book two and three, one of the things that can happen is that you can take lots of opportunities to practice four fingers, or you can not. <laughs> And it's a bit like the opportunities to shift, that you can play these pieces hardly using the four, but then you will hit a brick wall in book four, which is really unfair on your students because book four has enough challenges in it, even when well prepared for. Uh, so, for example, I was thinking about it in the Boccherini as well. If you are going to play, there's no point, there's no reason not to use the four. If you're going to play, practice using the low four so that you don't have to hop the three over and down, then there's a good reason for using the open string because you don't want to practice that. But if you're just using the three, then use the four as well. And if you're using the low four, then obviously you've got the three ready on the E string. Same here. Go 
this lasts a few weeks and unfortunately it dies again. This time he gets very, very angry that he's killed the goldfish again. Um, um, and then once he's calmed down, he's regained his thoughts again, and now he's just sad.
that I wasn't doing it right before. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, I think it's one of those moments where it really helps to know what kind of learner you are and what kind of learner your students are. Because I, for example, find it basically the only way I can realistic, uh, not, not realistically, reliably make sure I know where I am is to think about which part of the page I'm on and also to make sure I've done that. Da, 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 Those are the two kind of anchors for me that I think, right, I'm at the bottom half of the page, so it must be a da 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 And then, okay, you need to do that big jump up to what feels like too far away, so da 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 But other people will be, you know, thinking about, yeah, just remembering, like, go to four, or, you know, in the map of the P, I guess I'm using a, a sort of map idea, but yeah, it helps. Um, what is a main teaching point of this piece before you're looking at the music? Um, chords. Very good. Um, lifted strokes. Excellent. Um, what do you think, having just played it? Bogus region. Very good, yeah. I mean, in, yeah, but something that we have to become more and more. Um, sophisticated about, isn't it? Look five. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good. So, how would you prepare for the chords? What would you review for the chords? Uh, where's the first time we get a chord or a double stop? to choose for, and the Barker Rot. Um, book four, Lifted Strokes. Yes. Strokes two. <laughs> Not so much. I mean, a bit. Uh, size three. Yeah. Just thinking about size two. Size one. Yes, and then obviously 
Sea Sites 3 would be an excellent one because it's got lift of strokes and loads of chords. Yeah. Good. Um, what's the danger with this part? Last question. To make it like Breaking the Vault in that bit, as opposed to. Uh, yes. Yeah. Because at the beginning, you're doing. Mm. The, um, it's a bit more like Becca Rose in that bit. Yes. It's three takes, isn't it? Yes, excellent. Felt like there was a tendency to be that. Yes, yeah, that was okay. Well, that's why I was panicking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is what you hear as yes. well. <laughs> so, you know, all of the mistakes that we make are really helpful because they are the ones that the kids will make. And then if you, you know, if you play perfectly, you're never going to understand what the children are going to struggle with. And when you don't play perfectly, which none of us do, then it's like, it, it can be really helpful because it's like, well, how am I going to fix that? That's exactly what you need to teach your students. It's going to be the same thing. But it's that circle action, but it's reverse. So the only other time we've done it is at the end of the bottom reading line. It's that reverse retake. Yes, yeah, so it's the one. first, it's the so first, it's the first up bow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So which part of the arm are we thinking about for that? I'm thinking here because I Yeah, can't. exactly. Yeah. Use the big muscles. Yeah. And you think muscles. about the elbow and the upper arm is leading it and the elbow is the sort of making the shape. I think in the elbow and that kind of gravity, the gravity. Yeah. Just as you let gravity take it that way, you yeah. let it take it to that way. Exactly. Yeah. So it's the, the active part is here and the, the circles are, yeah, exactly like, like the other way. You're thinking down first, you're also thinking down and in, not down and out. But for me as well, I have to really focus on really making sure my shoulders are mm -hmm. soft. Yeah. And that's because if, if I'm stressed a little bit, I'll fall it forward. It's not yeah. going to yeah, yeah. It's not gonna be easy to do that in rhythm. I think that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and you end up kind of yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Good, well done. <laughs> Very nice. Anything we've not talked about. Wait, what one was that we used for that we played? That was um, Good Bombs in D. Oh, okay. The first piece in book five. Cool. Bye bye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um so original the name. So <laughs> original. <laughs> <laughs> Is that with the rock kids? <laughs> yeah. Well, all, our, all our students laugh about that, don't they? Who wrote this piece? I don't know. Was it Bach? <laughs> Is it the box? Yeah, exactly. What's it called? I don't know the box. <laughs> right, what are you going to lead? Country dance. Alrighty. I'm going to try it. <laughs> Which stage of bowing development are you going to take us to? Um, what do you mean? Up bow spiccato or? <laughs> Up bow spiccato or on the string? What I mean by the stage is that when they first learn it, they'll probably learn it off on the string. Okay. Part, partly because their left hand can't keep up. Yeah. So you need to be able to play it slower, not only for the bow to be. But also because this is all like not ready to go. On the string then, I think. <laughs> I've been practicing off, but I still haven't quite got the ratio sorted out. Okay. Okay. Are you comfy there? You want yeah. to come? I have a question about the off. Do you start really at the tip? Because it's so much. No, you can't. Good. You can't. Yeah. No, okay. I mean, it's, you can. Some people can. I can't. It's I really can. very wild right up there. Yeah. yeah. It's about three quarters. Okay. It's such a short piece. We'll play it once on and then we'll play it again okay. off, and you can just. Uh, you Amuse yourselves. <laughs>
first one we sort of put in from like two pieces before, I think. I feel like with that one, it's just like, how long do we call it, like target practice? Like you mm. can't really practice it, you just have to do it like 20 times over. Yeah, 20 yeah. times over every day for like a month. <laughs> In terms of tracing techniques, mm. <laughs> tracing shifts less um, in book. Or I'm going to be doing a bow because that's got a shift, like a direction, it's a quick one. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's pretty comprehensive. The thing about this piece is that it comes out of nowhere and it's very poorly set up from yeah. rep. There's no up bass staccato, up bass staccato in book four, as we've talked about before. So what would you pull out for up bass staccato? Mm -hmm. Good, and? Beethoven. Yeah, Beethoven. Yeah. And yeah. one more thing, um, book three. Yes, your favorite. <laughs> Seem to be saying Becca a lot today. Oh, no, really? so it's just a <laughs> seminal piece. Not um, my day today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good, and then, um, <coughs> Yeah, this did it, did it, did it, did it. We've really no, not got anything that helps with that. But it does help with next up minuet. So it's a setup piece. Book seven. I was wondering if it was a bit similar to the rest. Um, yeah, some things are. I don't think they find that hard because if you look at it like that, then it's quite similar to quite a lot of the pieces we've done. It's the emphasis on the semi quaver and the fact that it's an inverted dotted rhythm that is weird. So, what's the piece in book seven that's set up for? Mozart minuet. There's some broken down there as well. Oh, I'm going to have to call the police again, aren't I? They didn't send me the thing about. I'm just going to. Yeah, someone just chucked a glass or a bottle or something. Tracing our techniques. Yeah, she sounds like she's from yeah. Niagara. Well. Let's have a bow okay. and I'm going to go and call the local cops. <laughs>
Fun and games at Suzuki Hub. Come on, computer. 